take your Bible, turn to Genesis 28 and John 1. Genesis 28, John 1. The book of DNA, which um, we have the mighty angel holding a little book in his hand open. Uh, that, that book is symbolic of several things. Number one, the Bible, of course, the book of God. God is not the author of confusion. Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith. Um, where's the other author verse? Um, the, the, uh, Jesus being the author of eternal salvation. So all three of those are the places where you find the word author at in the Bible. And then we have the book of DNA. Um, DNA is a book. Psalm 139, we learned that verse. In thy book all my members were written, which in continuance was fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. And that describes how DNA works. I mean, you couldn't get it any simpler than that. That's about the simplest explanation. And I like it that way, because I'm not... Uh, I, I'm not... Uh, all that intelligent, especially when it comes to math and things like that. Um, I, I got through algebra when I was in high school, but that's about it. That's as far as I went. And um, so there's just a lot of things I don't understand, but when I read it in the Bible, I get it. And I like it that way. God made his word accessible to even to people who aren't the smartest people uh, in the flock. I like it that God uh, showed us grace and showed us favor. Anyway, uh, you know, I tell people that DNA looks like a ladder and so on, and that when DNA is in its normal position, it is rolled up. It's rolled together like a scroll, and uh, the Bible refers to that as being crooked. Um, we use the word zigzag or different words like that, um, but the Bible uses the word crooked. And so when it's rolled up in its natural state, it's crooked. It before, obviously, before the DNA book can be read in your body, it has to first be opened. See how simple that is? You can't read a closed book. Can't do it. In fact, Isaiah, uh, I think it's Isaiah 28 or Isaiah 29. Uh, Isaiah uses this, this teaching of someone taking the book and it's closed and giving it to someone who can read it, has wisdom, and says, can you read the book? And the person says, I cannot read it for it is closed. Um, and then he takes it to... Uh, somebody else who can't read it and he says can you read this book and he said no I can't read so anyway uh, in your natural state the book is closed but there is something in your body in fact there's one thing in your body that can unroll and unwind and take it from a crooked state to a straight state try to say that three times fast straight state uh, it's the only thing in your body that can do it, and I'm going to teach it to you this morning. So, in Isaiah 28, obviously, we have the story of Jacob. Went from Beersheba and went toward Haran, and he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. Took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows. Lay down in that place to sleep, and he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. Behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. Does that remind you of, and I'm going to step outside the Bible world for a minute. Does this idea of a step ladder reaching up into heaven remind you of a rock and roll song? Stairway to heaven. Okay, there is a, and it, the song is actually about a lady. Well, I know who that lady is. Okay, she's Mystery Babylon. And she's buying your stairway to heaven is how the lyrics go. And um, 
But we find out from scriptures something totally different. So he says, and he dreamed and behold, a ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reached to heaven. And then it says, and behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. Angels of God, angels are made of light. They're made of fire so that they shine bright in, in their normal natural state. The good angels do. They shine bright all of the time. So think of angels walking up and down this ladder. And that's basically the same thing that you have when your DNA needs to be read. You have an, a sort of like an angelic messenger that's looking for a place in your DNA that has the recipe for whatever it is your body happens to need at that time. It goes up and down, up and down your DNA ladder, just like the angels here did. And I want you to notice in verse 17 that Jacob called this place Bethel in verse 19. But in verse 17, he was afraid and said, how dreadful is this place? And this is none other but the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. Now, I want you to think about what he said now in relation to the book. The book. Everybody who's hearing me right now, my hope and prayer is that if, if you're not, Today, that one day soon, you could truly say, my body is the dwelling place of God himself. Because God doesn't dwell in temples made with hands, but God does dwell in the temple of man. And so, because of that, this is Bethel. My body is Bethel. It is the house of God. And for, the, if for no other reason other than the layout, the shape of the bone structure. I've taught you that before. But also the fact that DNA works exactly like Jacob's dream that he dreamed. Angels of God ascending and descending upon this phosphorus made DNA ladder. Okay. Uh, now, when it says in verse uh, 12 that behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it, we're going to find out the New Testament actually defines for you who that ladder is. And it's not Led Zeppelin, I guarantee you. In John chapter 1, verse 51, if you want to turn there, underline this in your Bible. And you can make or say, you can put in there a reference to Genesis 28, 12 for future study. I think this is when Jesus was calling, um, who was it, Philip or Nathaniel? One of those guys. Let's see here who it was. Come on, turn that page. There we go. There we go. 51. Yeah, Nathaniel. In verse 47, Jesus saw Nathaniel coming to him and saith unto him, Behold, an Israelite indeed in whom is no guile. Boy, <laughs> Boy Jesus knows Jews, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. <laughs> A Jew in, him, in whom is no guile. Uh, behold, an Israelite indeed in whom is no guile. Nathanael said unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. Nathanael answered and saith unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, and thou art the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than these. He saith unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Watch this, now here it is, Hereafter, 
you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man, Jesus Christ. And I like this. I may mention this during the message this morning because it's in my notes. But Jesus goes by various uh, names. Uh, he's the Word. Uh, he is God Almighty. He's Wonderful Counselor, the Everlasting God, the Prince of Peace. He is also called the Son of God, and he's called the Word of God. But I think the one that has the most meaning to me, in fact, it, this phrase is actually contained more in the Bible than Son of God or Word of God, uh, is the title of Son of Man. We know that he's the Son of God. He is God's only begotten Son. We know that, and that's what makes him God who walked among men, but that also he was born of man. He was brought into this world through the lineage of Judah. And Judah passed his generations on down to Joseph and Mary. They were both of the tribe of Judah. And um, so Jesus came from the tribe of Judah, making him the son of man, meaning that the, the God part of Jesus and the man part of Jesus were full and complete. He was not part God and part man. He was fully God and fully man. And there's no way that you can separate out which part is which because they're all together. And I like the fact that he's called the son of man because that makes him related to us by, by his coming into this world. That's what makes him close to us, or, or at least that's the way I see it. That it's what makes him close to me at times, is when I regard him as the Son of Man, and that he, that he was made just like I was made, yet without sin. And so, um, you see the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. So the Son of Man and the ladder of Jacob are identical. They are, they are one and the same. Because they, number one, the angels of God ascending and descending on the ladder. The angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. And then you have uh, the ladder itself. You have, the, you have a heaven opened. Excuse me. You have the ladder that has been, was crooked, but it was made straight. And now, uh, what the contents of the ladder of DNA can now be read. They can now be seen and they can now be read. So before the seals of the hydrogen bonds can be opened, the book needs to be unwound. That's what I said earlier. The book needs to be opened. The Bible word for twisted, as in the helix shape of DNA, is crooked. Uh, the mechanism in DNA for unwinding DNA and making it straight is called, get ready for this word, topoisomerase. Okay, remember that one, topoisomerase. Everybody say it, topoisomerase. Oh, you, you guys are brilliant, okay? Now remember what I said. It's, it's like a zipper is what it is. And before the DNA can be read and copied and used, this one little machine in your in your cell this one little tiny i mean dna itself is tiny it's so in fact it's so small it's smaller than the wavelengths of light light generally does not bounce off of d dna that's why we can't see it it's so small we can't we can't see it even with scanning electron microscopes and stuff we can't we don't we can't see it so there's one teeny tiny little machine in there called topoisomerase that has one job. And that is to scan the DNA and when it finds the place, like, like we read last week in Isaiah, when Jesus found the place, he had unrolled the book 
And when he found the place in Isaiah that he wanted to read from, he stopped right there, unrolled the scroll, and read, uh, what was it, Isaiah chapter 61. The Spirit of the Lord has come upon me to, uh, in order for me to preach the gospel to the poor. Or that's a rough, rough remembering of it. So anyway, here is this, here is this machine. And if it's not, if the part of the DNA that it's reading is not necessary, it won't mess with it. It won't unwind it and unzip it and break the seals. It won't do anything to it. It'll just leave it alone. But when it does get to a place, it's kind of like when I'm teaching. When I get to a place where I'm teaching something and, I, and in my mind or in my heart, the Holy Ghost is saying, might give them this verse then I know then to go to that verse and read you that verse because that's what is needed as part of whatever message God has me preaching. That's what's needed there. So topo isomerase acts in exactly uh, the same way. Now watch this. You have a, you have biblical, this is biblical doctrine. Biblical doctrine. And it's called... Can the crooked be made straight? Now, how do we use the word crooked? Simple sentence will do. Something wrong. Don't go to such and such car dealer. He's crooked. Or do what? Congress. <laughs> yeah, there you go. True. Um, or if you go to, if you find a car dealer that you like and gives you a good deal, you would say, hey, go see this guy over here at this dealership over here. He'll deal straight with you. Okay? So watch this. This... And, how does a serpent move? Crooked. God designed it that way. He's showing us in the design of a serpent. The serpents cannot, they cannot move straight forward. It's impossible for them. When, when, whenever God took the legs off of the serpent in Genesis chapter 3, that made it impossible for the snake to go in a straight line. He has to go in a crooked fashion. It's the only, that's the only way he knows. And that, that is the devil. And everything I know about the devil is that he is crooked. How do we say it? Crooked as a dog's hind leg? That's crooked. Ecclesiastes 7.13 Consider the work of God. For who can make that straight which he hath made crooked? Look at that. Now, when we apply that to the Bible, we get the same answer as we did last week. Who is worthy to loose the seals and open the book? Only God can do that. Amen? Only God can open our understanding of His Word. Only God can take what's been rolled up, what's been sealed, what's been hid... What was a mystery? Only God can reveal those things to us. Um, what did uh, Jesus say to Peter when Jesus said, Who do you say I am? Jesus said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. What did Jesus say to him after that? Flesh and blood hath not revealed that to, to you, Peter. Okay, the Holy Ghost revealed that to Peter. The Holy Ghost opened Peter's eyes and let him see that Peter was following none other than the very Son of God. Even the Roman soldier who is standing there at the foot of the cross at, at near the tail end of the crucifixion says, Surely this man was the Son of God. Truly this man is. Um, so anyway, who can make that straight which he hath made crooked? The answer is nobody. Isaiah 42, 16. I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. And I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them. And 
what? Crooked things straight. In fact, what was the ministry of John the Baptist? To prepare the way of the Lord and to make his paths straight. So see how easy this is to, to discern and, and figure out for yourself, for your life? Would you rather, A, follow the devil knowing that all of his ways are crooked? Or would you rather follow the living word of God, Jesus Christ, who always walks a straight line? How do they... Um, how do they do uh, field sobriety tests? What's one of the tests they do? Can you walk a straight line? If you're drunk, you can't. If you're drunk, if you're over the legal limit, there is no way in the world you're going to walk a straight line. Uh, that part of your brain has been suppressed and you just can't do it. No matter how hard you try, no matter how many times you get chances, you just can't do it. And uh, so again, would you rather follow the devil who makes and every path that he walks is a crooked path? Or, I, in fact, I'll give you this. Uh, who knows what a labyrinth is? Or a maze? Who knows what a maze is or a labyrinth? It's a crooked, twisted, even though sometimes when you, I like to do puzzles like this, and you're given a, a, a maze or a labyrinth to try to find, you start at the outside and try to find your way in, and you're looking at the whole thing overhead, but still we have a hard time figuring out the right path. And uh, there are, believe it or not, there are churches that have what's called prayer labyrinths on their property. And they teach their people to go out and they will have, from the starting point, 11 different uh, stopping points. And when you get to those points, you're supposed to stop and meditate on something. Uh, you're supposed to think of... I don't know, something that they tell you to think about and ponder or empty your mind on and whatever. And then you move on. And when you get to the center place, they say that's where God is. God is in the center point of the labyrinth. Have you ever heard of churches called Center Point Church? Cross Point Church. All of those names come from the idea of the prayer labyrinth. And so they believe that walking that labyrinth is a form of prayer where they go by these stations, they read whatever text there is to read, they meditate on it, and then they move on and it's a crooked path all the way to the center. And then when they get to the center, they're told that that's where Christ is, that's where he's waiting for you. And uh, he's, he's been waiting for you all along. Can someone name for me the place in the Bible where that teaching comes from? No, you can't, because there is no such place. God clearly equates a crooked path with the one who can only walk a crooked path, and that is the serpent. And so anyway, um, Isaiah 42, uh, 16 again, he says, I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them and crooked things straight. In other words, when God saves you, he takes all the crooked things that are in your life and he straightens them out for you. Takes all of our, all of our dirty, evil sins. Uh, sins against other people, taking advantage of other people. Um, not being straight in your business dealings. Being crooked in just about everything you do. In fact, you're known by your family, your friends, your co-workers, business people, partners or whatever, you're known for being crooked. You're not known for being a straight dealer. You're known for being crooked. And so uh, God said he would make those crooked things straight. These things will I do to them and not 
forsake them. The question that I ask this morning is, are you ready in your life to have God make all of the crooked things that you do and say, are you ready for God to straighten them out and make them straight and keep them straight? Are you ready for God to do that? He said, these things will I do unto them and not forsake them. Isaiah 45, 2, I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. In other words, he's going to set captives free. He's going to give them a straight path to walk on. Uh, who remembers Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz? When she started on the yellow brick road, do you remember what that yellow brick road looked like? It was a crooked path given to her by a white witch. Think about it. White witches are good witches. No, they're not. There is no such thing as good witchcraft. Amen. Amen. Deuteronomy 32, 5, they have corrupted themselves. See, this is how it's used in the Bible. Their spot is not the spot of his children. They are a perverse and crooked generation. And the word generation. In fact, look at this symbol. Let's see if I can get a marker here. Look at this symbol here. See in the middle, you have two serpents entwined together that was an ancient symbol how in the world did they know or could they have known that that's exactly what dna looks like in its natural state two coiled up twisted serpents okay how could they have known that uh, and it's found in Literally hundreds, if not thousands of places all throughout around the world. Job 26, 13. By his spirit, he hath garnished the heavens. His hand hath formed the crooked serpent. And here's what interests me. Uh, I, I spent some time last night with my jaw wide open. I was watching uh, some videos of the different images that the Hubble telescope and the James Webb Telescope has captured over the years. And I just sit there in absolute awe of how amazing God is and how beautiful the heavens are, especially now that we can see them farther than any other generation of man has ever seen the stars we can see them we can see things we've never seen before and when they take pictures of them and send them back and they prepare them and show them and i'm just like i was i was sitting there going that is beautiful i'm in awe but did you know that part of those stars make a constellation called Draco. Draco is Latin word for dragon. And, it's a go, and it revolves around the uh, Polaris. It revolves around the North Star. The North Star never moves. It sits at the north and sailors and people have navigated by, that, by the North Star for hundreds if not thousands of years because it never moves. It's a point in space that is in the same place every day, no matter what time of the year it is. But around the North Star is a constellation that does this. And it's got a crooked path. He's, in Job 26, 13, by his spirit, he hath garnished the heavens. His hand hath formed the crooked serpent. In other words, God even made a constellation up there of the crooked serpent that we call Draco or Draconis or... Dra Drago or the dragon Philippians 2 15 that you may be blameless and harmless the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a here it is crooked and a perverse nation now God's telling you the the meaning of the word crooked it means perverse 
How perverse is this world right now? It's awful. It's awful. Um, you have the FBI, other uh, in, investigative agencies around the nation that are monitoring the download, upload habits of people and the things that they download and upload on the internet. And I'm here to tell you, there's not very much that, that they let go. There's a lot of very, very perverse things that are moved about on the internet. People are being arrested now, is how I'm mean, just reading articles. It's very, very crooked and a perverted world that we live in. Um, uh, even to the point of, well, I don't know if I'll get in trouble for this one. People in high positions who are part of, how can I say it? Trafficking situations. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. It's bad. It's bad. Um, God wants us to shine like the sons of God, like the stars, in a dark, and a perverse and a crooked nation in the midst of that evil generation, a crooked generation, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom you shine as lights in the world. As the world grows darker, I want my light, the light of my family, the light of this church, I want it to be able to be seen brighter and brighter and brighter every single day. Amen to that. My, my prayer for all of you is that God works in you His work so that you become sons of God shining bright. People People watching you will follow your path because they can see that it's a straight path and they will follow you and emulate you. There's nothing wrong with that. They will follow you and emulate you right into heaven because you walked a straight path. But I guarantee you, the people you work with, the people you're have, you're in there, that's in your family, the people who are friends with you, they know whether or not you walk a straight path or not. They know whether or not you really believe the things that you say you believe. They know those things. And they're not fooled by it. They may be your friends. They may not say anything to your face. But down in their heart, they know who you are. That you're just as crooked as everybody else is. And when you're standing there smiling at them, say, hey, I'd like for you and your family to come to church this Sunday. Well, you know, we're going out of town. They're going to make up every excuse in the world because they're like, they're thinking, well, if you're that way and you go to church, that's the church I don't want to go to. Because it's probably a crooked church. Now, well, we don't, we run out of time. And she probably heard me say that. Uh, Isaiah 40. Here's topo isomerase. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill shall be made low. And the crooked shall be made straight. There it is. And the rough places plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. Oh, think about that, people. Think about that. When... 
God opens the book for you and you're reading the straight path and I'm telling you the glory of the Lord is going to be in this book. It's going to be there and it's going to be revealed and all flesh shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. And if God's mouth spoke it, then it's going to happen. Amen. Father, bless your word today. Thank you, Lord, for uh, helping us and giving us light through your word. I pray, dear God, that your word would abide in us always so that we could shine brighter and brighter in this world, in this very perverted, crooked, nasty, evil generation that we live in. Father God, that Lord, that we would shine brighter each and every day. And Father, not that we would be seen, but that the world would see Christ in us is my prayer today. That people would see not how good I am, but they would see Christ in me. Blessed be your word, we pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen.